Hey everybody, Johnny here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Displace modifier and how we can use it to add surface detail to our objects. Let's get into it. The Displace modifier uses a texture to move the surface vertices of your object. Here, let's add one to this cube. The first thing you'll want to do is select the texture that you want to use for your displacement. Here, I'll create a new one and then click on the Properties button to edit that texture. For this one, I'm going to change the type to Clouds. If we look at our object, we can see that it's been distorted somewhat, but it looks nothing like Clouds. The reason for this is this cube only has 8 vertices. We're going to need a lot more geometry in order to see this effect. One way to do that, while retaining the shape of the cube, is to add a Subsurf modifier in Simple Mode. We want to make sure it's the first modifier on the stack, set it to simple, and start increasing the viewport levels. Now looking at our displace modifier, we can start looking at some of the options. The strength option determines how much effect to place on our object. When strength is zero, it has no effect, and as we increase it, the effect gets stronger. The strength can also be applied to the negative. For now, I'm going to go with a strength of 0.25. The mid-level option tells us how to interpret the texture. When the mid-level is 5, that means 50% gray gives no displacement. Anything less than 0.5 gives a negative displacement, and anything over 0.5 gives a positive. If we set the mid-level to 0, that means a texture of black will give us no displacement, and then anything with a higher level than 0 will increase the displacement. Likewise, if we set the mid-level to 1, that means a value of 1 gives no displacement, and anything below 1 gives us a negative displacement. Much like many other modifiers, we can create and assign a vertex group that will control what part of our mesh will receive the displacement. Here, I'll add a vertex group to half of my cube. Now I will assign that vertex group to my Displace modifier. As you can see, only the vertices that were in the Displacement group get the modifier on them. In addition, we can use partial vertex group weights to have the effect only partially affect the mesh. Here I'll assign these vertices a weight of 0.25. And as you can see, the center line of the object now has less displacement than the outside. The coordinates option tells us what coordinate system to use for applying our displacement map. In local mode, the direction is taken based on the current object. So if I rotate my object, the displacement rotates with it. In global mode, the displacement is applied based on the global coordinate system. So as I rotate my object, you will see that the object moves through the displacement rather than the displacement moving with the object. Object Mode uses a second object to determine the coordinate system. In this case, I'm going to add an empty, and I'll set the reference object to that empty. Now as I move the empty, the displacement moves along with it. This works for location, rotation, and scale. The UV coordinates use the UV map of the object to determine where to place the displacement. Opening up a UV editor, as I alter my UV map, you'll see that the displacement changes with it. It's easier to see this effect if we change our texture type to an image. Having set my image to the extend mode, this image will now only be displaced on the one face of this cube. Once we know our texture, what coordinates it's going to use, what strength and mid-level it's going to use, the direction says which direction that displacement is going to be applied in. By default, it uses the face normals of the object. So if we look at this object's face normals, we see that they're pointing out, and this displacement is moving in the direction of the normals. Here, I've placed all six sides of this cube over the image, so that we can take a look at the other direction options. If we change the direction from normal to x, now the displacement is only affected in the x direction. So on the left and right sides of this object, we see the displacement. 
there is displacement happening on the other sides. It's just happening parallel with those faces. In the same way, changing the direction to Y makes the displacement happen along the Y axis of our object, and the same with Z. If you would prefer the X, Y, and Z to be affected by the global X, Y, and Z axis and not the object's X, Y, and Z axis, you can change the space to global. If you've added custom normals to your object through something like the normal edit modifier, you can use those normals instead of the default normals for your object. Finally, there's the RGB to XYZ option. This option takes into account the color of the texture to determine which direction it's going to be displaced in. For instance, if I use this texture, we can see its effect here. This top left side is red. Red maps to X, and we're in local space. As we can see, the x-axis runs along this red line, so this part of the cube is being displaced along the x-axis because it's red. Green is being mapped to the y-axis, and so we can see the green quadrant is being extruded here. And here the blue is being displaced along the z. And as before, the RGB to XYZ direction can also be used in global space rather than local space. I hope this intro to the Displace modifier has been helpful, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you found it helpful, click the like button and make sure to subscribe. If you have questions or just want to chat, make sure to join us on our Discord server. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch the video. I'll catch you next time.